The number one question that I get asked on this channel is, hey Tyler, what is the rod reel line combination that you use for that lure or that technique? And although I try to put all that stuff in every video that I do, I decided to make a specific video about the rod, reel, and line combination that I use for every single lure. Believe it or not, I use these 12 rod and reel combos for every single purpose in bass fishing. There are a few combos that are extremely versatile, and there are also a few combos that are lure specific. Now, when I'm speaking about lures today, I'm going to use general terms. If I say shallow and medium diving crankbaits, that could include a, a KVD 1.5 or or a Bandit 200. So if you have a very specific lure that you would like to know the best rod and reel for, it will probably fall into one of those generalizations or categories. I am really gonna try my best to hit every single lure category out there, but if I miss something, just leave it down below in the comments and I will respond with what I think is the best rod and reel combo for that lure. Without further ado, let's jump into the combos. Now I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Most of the rod and reel combos that you see include an arc rod and a Bruin ELS reel. Now these are companies that I have chosen that I reached out to to partner with. But if you like a different brand, maybe you like Daiwa or Abu Garcia, the important part of this is the length of the rod, the action, the power, the gear ratio of the reel, the line size. That is what is most important and most of time you can find a model that is very similar to one of the ones that I'm holding in that brand that you like. Now the first seven combos that I'm going to show you are very versatile rod and reels. You can fish a number of different techniques, a number of different lures on each one of these combinations. The next four combinations are very lure specific or area specific rods and the last combo that I'm going to show you is simply my favorite. All right, combo number one is a seven foot medium heavy power extra fast action rod. I typically pair that with a 7.3 to 1 gear ratio reel. Now I do a lot with this rod right here. As you can see, I use it a lot for spinner baits. Anytime that I am casting a spinner bait next to shore or around cover that I can see, this is the rod that I go with. Now, I not only use this for spinner baits, but I also use this for skipping jigs. Anytime I am skipping a jig underneath of a dock or underneath overhanging trees, this seven foot rod is by far the best rod that I have found for skipping lures. To me, a seven foot rod is actually a little bit shorter than most rods that I use, but having that shorter rod really allows you to place a lure. It really helps you to be extremely accurate with your casting, which is extremely important when you're fishing a spinner bait or skipping a jig. Now with both of those techniques, I'm going to use a 20 pound fluorocarbon line. Now I also use this rod a lot for buzz baits, but I don't use 20 pound fluorocarbon. I'm actually going to go up to a 30 or 40 pound braided line when I use this for buzz baits. Now you could use this rod for lighter Texas rigs or skipping Texas rigs under docks and whatnot, but I tend to like a little bit more length with my Texas rigs, which we will get into in just a little bit. Now I think that it is really important to know before we go further with all these rod and reel combos is, you know, when I'm talking about a spinner bait, for instance, with this rod, I'm really referring to kind of the normal when it comes to spinner baits, which is like a 3 8 ounce spinner bait or maybe a half ounce spinner bait. That is typically what guys throw. Now, if I am out there fishing on ledges offshore and maybe I'm fishing an ounce and a half, two ounce spinner bait, that's going to out power this rod. In that situation, I'm probably going to want a little bit longer rod, maybe a little bit heavier power rod so that it can manage that bigger spinner bait a lot better. So you just have to use a little bit of common sense when it comes to selecting that rod reel line combo for outlier type lures. All right, moving on to the next rod and reel combo. This is my kind of go-to spinning rod and reel outfit. This is a seven foot, one inch, medium power, extra fast action rod. Now the reel that I have on here is a Daiwa Tatula LT series. This is the 2500 series. There's a lot of guys that like big spinning reels like 3000 or 3500. I prefer the 2500s. Now on this reel, I am going to run a 10 to 15 
13 pound braided line to a six to 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. It really just depends on where I am fishing and what I am using this rod for. Now I use it a lot for drop shots. And if I'm fishing for Northern smallmouth with a drop shot, I'm going to use 10 pound braid to a six or eight pound fluorocarbon leader. Now I also use this exact same rod and reel combo for wacky rigs. And if I'm fishing up shallow around a lot of brush, maybe around bigger fish, I'm going to use 15 pound braid to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. So depending on what situation you are fishing can be what line that you put on this rod. I typically use this rod for any single hooked finesse application. Other single hooked finesse techniques include a Ned rig or a Nico rig or a shaky head or a finesse swim bait. Now the only single hooked finesse lure that I don't use with that seven foot rod is a hair jig like this. This is a technique that you see a lot up in the north for smallmouth, little black hair jigs, brown hair jigs, white hair jigs. These are really, really light though. I mean, less than an eighth of an ounce. And I actually like to have a lot longer rod when using these little hair jigs because it allows you to cast that bait a lot further. Now this rod right here is a seven foot, six inch, medium light power, extra fast action. Now the reel that I have on here is a Daiwa Fuego reel. It's the exact same size as that LT, but this is a little bit cheaper reel. If you're looking for kind of a high quality, mid-range priced reel, this Daiwa Fuego is a good reel. Now besides a hair jig, I use this rod for finesse lures that have treble hooks on them. For instance, a spy bait is what I th use this rod a lot for. If you guys saw one of my recent videos on a Japanese lure called the riser bait, this is also the rod that I use for that little bait. There's also been times where I throw really, really small topwater baits. This is the rod for those little baits. All right, let's jump into the next combo right here, which is a seven foot, medium heavy power, moderate fast action rod. Now this particular rod here is a composite rod. Now a composite rod means that this rod is half glass and half graphite. And this to me is the perfect rod for a lot of my cranking situations. Anytime that I am fishing a shallow to medium depth diving crankbait, this is the rod that I pick up. So that's gonna include, you know, a, a square bill, and that's gonna include a six to eight foot diving crankbait. A lot of times when I'm cranking, I have found that I get the best results with a reel that is kind of around that 6.2 to one gear ratio, which is what is on here. Now I'm going to use anything from 10 pound fluorocarbon to 15 pound fluorocarbon with this outfit. If I'm fishing square bills along the bank in heavy cover, that's when I'm gonna use 15 pound. If I'm fishing one of those smaller eight foot divers that I really wanna get down there deep, I'm gonna use 10 pound fluorocarbon. Now the big thing with a composite rod like this is it has a very parabolic bend to it. If you look at the way that this rod bends, it will bend down here at the butt. And having that type of action with crankbait really helps you to lose a lot less fish while you're cranking or any time that you're using treble hook lures. Now, with that being said, I used to use this exact same rod with all of my topwater lures, but the big difference between a topwater lure and a crankbait like this is that topwaters, you tend to work them a lot more. If you think of a walking bait, you're constantly popping that rod, working it back and forth, or a popper, same thing. You're kind of popping and twitching that bot rod. You're using the rod a lot. Now, the reason that I switched over to actually a carbon rod, which I'll show you in just a minute, is that composite rods, although this one is very light, they tend to be just a little bit heavier than carbon or graphite rods. And if you are working a bait constantly all day long, you're going to feel the weight of that rod in your hand, in your wrist at night. So although you could use this rod for top waters, I actually have a different top water rod, which I'm about to show you right now. Now this is my top water rod and reel combo, but I use it for a lot more than just top waters. This is a seven foot, two inch medium power, and it has a moderate action also labeled as a regular action. Now this is actually an Arc Invoker Pro. It's a carbon rod. This rod is extremely light and extremely sensitive. Now, this particular model has more of that parabolic bend like we talked about with that composite rod, which is why I like to use this for basically all of my treble hooked 
topwater lures, whether that's walking baits, popping baits, wake baits, anything that is a topwater and has treble hooks on it, I'm gonna use with this rod. Now the one lure that I don't use with this rod is actually a whopper plopper. And we will get into that rod here in just a minute. Another big reason why I stopped using my cranking combo for a topwater combo is because I also like a different reel speed when I'm fishing topwater baits. With topwaters, I like something in that seven range. So like a 7.3 to one, that works really great with most topwater baits. I like 30 pound braid to a 20 pound monofilament element leader with most of my top water baits. Now I also use this rod for like weightless fluke style baits, whether that's a caffeine shad or a zoom fluke. I still use a 30 pound braid with those flukes, but I will actually tie on a 15 pound fluorocarbon leader. I like a really long leader with my flukes, something that's about 10 feet in length. The other thing that I like this rod for is for jigging spoons. And I still will keep that braid on there, usually a 30 pound braid to about a 15 or 17 pound fluke fluorocarbon leader with a jigging spoon. This is something that I do a lot in the summer as well as during the middle of winter. Now you don't have to keep braid on this combo. Something that I also use this combo for is actually kind of like smaller scrounger heads or finesse swim baits. A lot of times in those situations, I'm gonna put on like 12 pound, maybe 10 pound fluorocarbon with those small finesse swim baits or a scrounger. All right, moving on to the next rod and reel combo. This is actually another Invoker Pro rod. It's actually another carbon rod. Now this is a seven foot, six inch, medium heavy power, fast action rod. With this setup, I actually like an 8.1 to one gear ratio reel. I fish a lot of 20 pound fluorocarbon on this combo. Now, something that I used to use this rod and reel for a lot is anytime I was flipping or pitching jigs and Texas rigs against the bait. I used to love this rod and I still, there are situations where I still pick up this rod to flip and pitch with, but I'm gonna show you a different rod that I do that with now. But this is also a really great Carolina rig rod. If I'm fishing a Carolina rig, I like to have a longer rod because it allows me to make a long cast. It also allows me to get a great hook set in at a distance. With that Carolina rig, I typically use 20 pound fluorocarbon for my main line and 15 pound fluorocarbon for the leader. This seven foot six inch rod is also my rod that I use for most flutter spoons. If you are fishing most normal sized flutter spoons, ones that are four inch, five inch, maybe six inch, this rod will handle them well. If you're throwing those really big flutter spoons, this rod might be a little underpowered for some of those bigger flutter spoons. One thing that you may have noticed with the rod and reel combos that I have selected thus far is that most of them are a medium heavy power or kind of below, a medium or a moderate. You know, I don't have a ton of heavy action rods. I do have a few that I'm gonna share with you, but I don't have a lot of them because I tend to set the hook really hard. If I use a heavy power rod, although we're talking about power and not action, it tends to be a little bit stiffer. And I don't do well with stiff rods. I set the hook way too hard and something has got to give. And usually it's my line. So I tend to go with a medium heavy power a lot of times. Now, if you don't set the hook quite as hard as I do, you may be able to use a heavy power in a lot of these same applications where I use a medium heavy. But honestly, that is kind of the fun thing about bass fishing is that everybody is a little bit different. Everybody sets the hook a little bit different. And so that's why sometimes different rods work well for some guys and not for others. Now jumping into number seven in the very versatile combo is this rod right here. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is the Arc Tharp Series B Hitte rod. Now this is a seven foot four inch medium heavy power moderate fast action rod and like that grinder rod that I showed you earlier this is a composite rod. Now this rod was specifically made for chatterbaits and it is one of the best chatterbait rods that I have. I use a 7.3 to one gear ratio reel and 20 pound fluorocarbon for almost all of my chatterbait fishing. Now, this rod is not only great for chatterbaits, but it's also great for another one of my favorite lures 
which is the Whopper Plopper. When the Whopper Plopper first came out, a lot of guys were using really big flip and stick type rods with that bait. And although that can work, I find that because a Whopper Plopper has treble hooks on it, you tend to lose a lot when you're fishing a flip and stick with a Whopper Plopper. So having that composite rod, more of that parabolic action, really helps you to keep more fish on with that Whopper Plopper. Now with a Whopper Plopper or a Chopo, any type of bait that is similar to those baits. I like 40 pound braided line. Now the other lure that I like to fish a lot with this combo is a lipless crankbait. Anytime that I'm fishing a lipless crankbait, I'm typically fishing it on 15 pound fluorocarbon line. I fish a lot of half ounce lipless crankbaits, sometimes three quarters and sometimes a quarter ounce, but most of the time 15 pound fluorocarbon in this combo are perfect for a lipless crankbait. Now this Behete rod actually makes a great heavy scrounger rod as well. If you're fishing like an ounce scrounger on offshore structure, this is a great rod for that. Now let's move on to the more lure and area specific rod and reel combos. And the first one is gonna be this rod right here. This is a six foot, nine inch, medium power rod, moderate fast action rod. And as you can see, this is my jerk bait rod. Now the gear ratio with a jerk bait, you can really kind of use anything. I would suggest at least a 6.2 to one, something that's 6.2 or 7.1, because you primarily fish a jerk bait with your rod. You're twitching it with your rod. So you just want to be conscious of not picking up too much line, depending on if you're fishing during the middle of winter. Now, as far as the line size go, I'm going to fish a jerk bait on anywhere from eight to 12 pound test. This rod handles eight to 12 pound test perfectly. Although this is a very lure specific rod and reel combo, I do fish other lures on this bait from time to time. For instance, if I am fishing down the bank with a popper, that is when I will pick up this rod with 30 pound braid to a 20 pound monofilament leader. The reason being is if I'm fishing against the bank, I like that shorter rod because it really helps me to be very accurate with my cast. All right, moving on to the big stick. This is another very, I'm gonna say, area specific rod. And what I mean by an area specific rod is that I really only pull this rod out when I am fishing in thick vegetation. If I am thick fishing in thick cattails or thick lily pads or matted vegetation, this is the rod that I'm picking up. This is the Arc Tharp Series Gunterville Special Rod. It's a seven foot, 11 inch, heavy power rod, fast action rod. This is the rod that you need to get big bass out of heavy, thick vegetation. I have caught a ton of fish on this specific rod. It does really, really well in that thick vegetation. But the thing that I like most about this specific rod is that it is very light in my hand. Although it is almost eight foot long, it really doesn't feel like it. And any time that I am flipping and pitching, I typically use an 8.1 to one gear ratio reel. We got three more rods, two that are very specific and one that is my favorite. Let's talk about my deep cranking rod. This is a seven foot, 11 inch, medium power rod, moderate fast action rod. I really like a seven foot, 11 inch, an almost eight foot rod when I am fishing a deep crankbait because being able to make a huge long cast really helps you to get your bait down. The, the deep cranking rod that I have here is a carbon rod. Again, it has that parabolic bending rod. The thing that I really like about this rod is it is just very light. I can cast 5XDs really well with it. I can cast 6XDs really well with it. When it comes to the reel with a deep crankbait, something in that five range is typically what I have always gone with. That really allows you to throw a big deep diving crankbait all day long without the stress of constantly reeling that bait in. Now, most of the time with deep diving crankbaits, I'm using 12 pound fluorocarbon. I will go up to 15 pound fluorocarbon with those really big deep diving crankbaits, but I actually don't use this rod for those really big deep diving crankbaits. I use this rod for those big deep diving crankbaits, and I will use 15 pound fluorocarbon 
in this specific rod right here, which is a seven foot, 11 inch, heavy power rod, moderate fast action. So again, this has more of a moderate action that really allows me to hook up and keep fish pinned with crankbaits and, and treble hooked lures, but this is a heavier power rod. It really manages those really big, deep diving crankbaits extremely well. Another lure that I use this specific rod for are glide baits. I don't tend to throw the really, really big glide baits like the five, six, seven ounce, huge, like 10, 12 inch glide baits. I throw a lot more of your tournament size glide baits, something that's six inches, maybe seven inches. Those are the glide baits that I tend to throw. And this rod and reel combo right here work perfect for a glide bait. Now with a glide bait, I like 20 pound fluorocarbon, but I also like a really low gear ratio reel like the one that I have on here for deep cranking, which is a 5.3 to one gear ratio reel. I have come down to my favorite rod. So if you are still with me, you get to see my absolute favorite rod, and that's this bad boy right here. This is the Arc Tharp Series Moneymaker Rod. This is a seven foot, three inch, medium heavy power, fast action rod. I use this rod for a number of different techniques. A couple that I use it a lot for are frogs. Anytime that I'm fishing a popping frog or I'm skipping a frog across some scum, this is the rod that I use. I also use this as what I call an offshore rod. If I'm fishing baits like a wobblehead or a Texas rig out deep or a football jig or a swim bait with like a half ounce to one ounce head, this is the rod that I'm going to pick up. I also like to use this rod now when I am flipping and pitching. I talked about earlier how I used to use that seven foot six inch rod a lot. This is a lot easier rod to manage when I'm flipping and pitching against the bank. And I like to use a braid to fluorocarbon leader. That really works great for me. I've kind of adopted this over the last year and I absolutely love it now. Actually, I, I like flipping and pitching more now because I use this rod and reel combo. Now, the reel for this, high speed reel. I like an 8.1 to one gear ratio a reel but because i use this rod for so many different techniques i will adjust the gear ratio for the lure that i'm using for instance this is my favorite mega bass mag draft rod if i'm fishing that six inch mega bass mag draft or a swim bait that is very similar i like a lower gear ratio something that is like a 6.2 to 1 with 15 pound fluorocarbon you may be sitting there thinking tyler i do not have the money to go out and spend and buy all these rods and i completely understand that that is why i already made a video where I think that you can do about 95% of the techniques that we talked about with these three rods right here. So if you enjoy this video, I think you're going to like that one as well. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.